Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly. And welcome to Summer School. I'm broadcasting almost live from wonderful Guthrie, Oklahoma at a softball tournament with my daughter. So I hope you guys know that I am doing my best to make sure that you can have a summer doing a bunch of different things as I'm ditching this first day with everybody. Um, so I'm going to try and make sure that we get to know each other and all the interesting, fun summer things that we try and squeeze in. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, so this, we now, oh, I made everybody say, what are you, the reason why you're doing summer school? One, I think you guys are the most interesting people because you do everything you can with your summertime stuff. Um, so that's basically it. So I do this so that I can do fun stuff with my family. I'm in Oklahoma, a um, couple other places that we go to for softball tournaments. My daughter's in theater. I like to be able to let them do everything they can that's more interesting than Oops, school. Did I say that? Oh, school's good and needed, but not always interesting. We'll do our best on that. All right. Units of one, part one. Elements. Uh, this is stuff I think you've heard before. Um, there's elements. There's that big periodic table in the room. You can probably see it. Block the vent. Um, elements are pure substances. So what that means is there's only one type of particle. All right. So the smallest part of an element is an atom. So that's one of the things you need to know. So these smallest parts. Smallest part of an element is an atom. Um, an element cannot be separated by chemical means. So remember I mentioned it was on the periodic table. So if I had iron, I cannot split iron into anything else. But if I had um, sugar water, not an element, if I had sugar water, um, I could separate that by boiling the water away and then having sugar. That would be separating. In an element, there's likely no bond. But if it has a bond, it is bonded to itself. So that's called a diatomic element. The seven diatomic elements are bonded to themselves, and I call them Honkelbrith. Honkelbrith. And I put them together. So the images that would represent this would be a monatomic element. That's right here. I've got no bonds, no touching. It's pure. All there are those light gray things. And a diatomic element. Okay. The diatomic element, when they touch, that means they're bonded, right? It's kind of like the creepy people in the hallway that are all over each other. You can tell they're bonded because they're all... It's bad. It's bad. Hope that doesn't happen in summer school. Compounds, part two. So compounds are also pure substances. So when I look right at this picture, do you see how there's only one type of particle here? The only particle I have is, I'm going to call it a Mickey Mouse, right? There's only Mickey Mouses in there, okay? And when I look at this, there's only, you know, the gray triple black dots, okay? There's not mixed with anything else. The smallest part of the substance, the smallest part of a compound, is a molecule. It can be separated by chemical means. So my favorite chemical means of separating something is to shoot lightning in it. So if I shot lightning, like Percy Jackson, um, I would have my shady one, and I would have um, the little black ones that would be separated. OK, um, there are two different types of atoms. So the two different types of atoms and the one on the left would be a dark circle and then light circles. Right now, there could be more than two. Right. I should say or more. OK, they're bonded as shown by touching. It has unique properties from the elements it is made up of. So H2O is an example of that. So hydrogen is explosive hydrogen makes your voice talk funny like helium and oxygen i know it's o2 but there's we'll get to the chemical reason why it's different uh, oxygen if you breathe it it doesn't make your voice sound higher it keeps you alive right and oxygen will support combustion meaning if you put oxygen on a flame flame gets bigger yeah fire but water if you breathe water your voice sounds dead because you die and if you try and light water on fire, you're an idiot because water doesn't light on fire. Okay. Sodium chloride, sodium. Sodium is a metal. Um, if you try to eat sodium, it will react with the water and it will create sodium hydroxide, which will dissolve the bottom of your mouth. And there'll be a hole in the bottom and it'll light into flames and it's terrible. Chlorine is what was used in gases and chlorine gas was used in world war one it's illegal 
um, and it makes your lungs react, the, the water vapor in your lungs reacts with chlorine and turns into hydrochloric acid and dissolves your lungs. But sodium chloride, mm, 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 yummy, yummy, yummy. Let me put it on my, by the way, the best way to put ketchup on your, or put salt on your fries is to put salt in the ketchup and dip into the super salty ketchup. So that's it. Ions, anything with a charge. Ions occur when, a, when protons do not equal electrons. That's important. We've got protons and electrons. I will describe those a little bit more later, but come on, you're sophomores. You've done protons and electrons before. So um, anything with a charge, remember protons are positive, electrons are negative. Go from there. More protons and electrons make positive ions, and these are called cations. Okay. More E negative, whoops, bad formatting. Then P positive makes negative ions and are called anions, okay? So how I remember this is if I drew a little picture of a cat here, cats are have are positive because cats have paws. See the paws in the cat? Oh, cats have paws and they have little claws. Cats are positive. That's it. So um, positive ions can be plus one or plus two, and negative ions can be negative two or negative one. All right, mixture. So, so far we've had through a couple of different, um, couple of different substances. We had elements, pure, molecules, pure, ions, which you don't really talk about them being pure or not, but they're a type of substance you got to deal with, and then mixtures. A mixture is a blend of properties. That means um, there are two different types of pure substances and you'll be able to detect both of them. So if I drink salt water, I taste wet water and ugh, salty, right? Um, there can be a mixture of atoms and atoms, atoms and compounds, or compounds and compounds. So um, atoms and atoms might be a box of circle atoms and square atoms. Atoms and compounds could be circle atoms and square triangle, right? or compounds and compounds, you get the idea. They can be separated by physical means, which is filtration or distillation. Distillation is separation by boiling. So you boil it away. Um, they may or may not have bonds, okay? They may have bonds if part of what you have are compounds. They may not have bonds if all you have are atoms. Uh, it could be compounds or diatomics. Mixtures are a blend of properties, okay? Compounds have new, unique properties. So I talked about that when I talked about the NaCl and the H2O, okay? Homogeneous means every sample is the same. See, if I cut this in half, I got two whites, two whites, two darks, two darks, okay? Um, but every sample has to be the same. That's what homogeneous means. Homo means same. Homogeneous means um, the samples are the same. Heterogeneous. The samples are not always the same. Um, so in the image, we'll just go with samples are not. Let me get rid of the word always. I'll talk about how it gets kind of crazy. Um, image, do you see how if I break it right here? Shh, top parts all yellow, bottom parts all red. Hey, Mark, can you come here for a second? I want to know if these are yellow or orange. Tricks. Layers are, so these circles, are they orange or yellow? No. Really? Hmm. Okay, I'm colorblind, so feel free to make fun of me for it. Um, layers are heterogeneous. The ratio does not have to be one-to-one. -one. It can be 10 to one, but it's gotta be consistent. Homogeneous and heterogeneous depend on the scale. So if you look at your skin, your skin's a mixture. You look at your hand right now, I hope, woo! But you know if you look at your skin, and it looks pretty consistent, but if you look at your skin under a microscope, oh look, I have a nucleus with some DNA stuff in there. Oh, I got that little hot dog thing, the mighty mitochondria and all that stuff. And you can tell that's a mixture when you do a microscope for it. But if you're just looking at it on the surface, your skin looks like a homogeneous mixture. That's it. I will say toodles. Thank you very much for doing your first summer chemistry podcast in class. How wonderful is that? Talk soon. Bye.